Hello guys and welcome to a new Snow Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hello everyone, Attack Power here. Looking forward to another exciting tournament playoff game. In this video we have for you game two of a best of three between Ghosty and Mamel in the semi-finals of the Division 1 Season 11 playoffs of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Tali Ihantala and on our left in the red team we have Ghosty playing on the allied side using the third US armoured with the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue team we have Mamil using the fifth panzer on the Axis side playing with the V for victory deployment type. So currently Mamil one game down will want to bring one back in order to level things out. Ghosty looking for the two wins in order to move on to the final. Uh, but what do you have to say about these decks, Attack Power? Uh, odd. <laughs> odd. Very odd. I mean, uh, third third armored on Maverick is perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, you got your Jumbo Wumbos and stuff for the center, you know, to tank for all of time. You got your M4A176s for longer range stuff. They got lots of 2K HE on their Shermans. Uh, you got the APCR and the M5. I mean, you got you got a lot of 2K options. This, this division makes tons of sense. Mamil's division, on the other hand, uh, I'm just going to start calling him Meme Meal uh, because this guy is a meme. V for victory against Maverick. Definitely the hardest income matchup in the game by far. And 5th Panzer, which is uh, at best a C-tier division, the most vanilla of vanilla divisions in the game. That just isn't that good yeah. in any particular way. The 5th so... Panzer, the absolute OG of divisions, was the one of the first two divisions that we had access to in that beta yeah it's crazy back when back when nothing was balanced and panthers were like the ultimate weapon of of power at the time right was that how it was no it was is2s were king at that uh, time because there was no king tigers that's right yeah uh this is a really strange everything about this choice is strange i feel meme written all over this i'm not gonna lie all right well let's have a look at what's going down for ghosty here we have the flamethrowers Going to be leading the charge with the armored LMG rifles and the M5 gun uh, with an M5 Stuart leader. Going to be providing leadership for that infantry. Further down, we got the double 50 cal, two flamethrowers. There's going to be another M5 gun, armored rifles, armored LMG rifles, MX Scott, and an M15 uh, for some anti air. On the side of Mamil, he's got on the very top side here. Two of these Recon SDKFZ 250-10s with Erzastruppen. Further down, we see the Erzastruppen with Panzergrenz, Griller, Sturm Pioneer, Panz uh, Pioneer Führer. At the front, going to be the 250-10 with a couple of MGs and a Pack 40 Avocado there for the Recon. And on the very bottom side, we're going to be Flamethrowers, Avocado. Going to be a couple of Panzergrenz with Erzastruppen, 259s. Uh, going to be joining the Frey and some Sturm Pioneers in a half-track. At the back, DO 215 out of the start for recon uh, aircraft. Very nice. Yeah, so it's essentially going to be up to Mamil to get a big start here at the beginning and then buckle down and hold on to his butt to try to survive through Maverick B phase where uh, Ghosty will have 80 points more a tick for a grand total of 800 more points by the end of B phase. Now, it ends up being 600, you know, with the A phase advantage that Mamil has, but. Yeah, I tried this a couple times when I was trying to see if V for Victory was secretly good. It didn't go well. Yeah, it's Just really, it really rough. That's like the biggest disparity in income, like I said, between any two divisions in the game. So any two division deployment types in the game. Um, so it's going to be really, really, really rough. Uh, I guess uh, technically... Juggernaut, Juggernaut Maverick C yeah, phase. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Juggernaut Maverick C but phase. How, but how often is that happening? Like, <laughs> the point is, like, how how often are you surviving Maverick again with Juggernaut in the first place? P-51 coming in here with its massive bomb load up. Going to wipe out these MG-42. Gets one of them, and most of that is that Stroopin as the 250-10 tries to get in. I see this push a lot more lately where Red Side comes down this road from the north to get into this little forest patch here. It works out pretty well. There's no way to stop it, really. Yeah, unless you get some like good 2K coverage across where the the road from where the Griller is, yeah. like early on, yeah, you, you're not going to be able to stop it. But one of the uh, half tracks did go down. The armored rifles got picked off out in the open. Griller is trying to finish off those 50 cows that were trying to uh, 
do the MG skirmish on the edge of the town. That, that always happens. You get like people putting MGs yeah. where the 50 cal is, and then MG42 where um, Emil is on that side, and you just have MGs engage each other at, at the maximum range. It's like the perfect yes. range for it as well. But really good job so far of uh, Ghosty to take out these early game half tracks once again. 259s die, or 250 tens, sorry, dying all across the map. Yeah, and those are actually really important in this game because third armored, of course, all their infantry comes in half tracks, which is extremely annoying. And the 250 slash 10 can do a really nice job, well, and the 9s as well, can do a really nice job of help clearing those out for only 20 points. Uh, yeah. So losing those is actually really painful for him. The pack 37, yeah, really, really nice for dealing with those half tracks, absolutely. 259s, probably a better choice overall because they can both deal with infantry and the half tracks, but the flamethrower oh. there actually managing to get the kill onto the 259 at close range, so very nicely done. Yeah, the problem is it's really hard to win any infantry fight when your opponent has half tracks with all their infantry. The M5 gun getting an APCR hit on that gorilla, the uh, panther now in. Oh, and the second APCR actually does miss, so now this thing should be unable to shoot at those anymore, and the gorilla should be able to finish something off here, I would think. Yeah, the trouble is it got loader wounded with the first hit from the APCR. Ah. So it's taken ages to aim and load, or ages to load, <laughs> uh, reload, <laughs> and uh, take on that M5 gun. Now the M5 gun's going to have plenty of time to retreat into heavy cover. But the half-tracks, meanwhile, are running riot in the center of the map. Yeah. Uh, half-tracks grabbing ground just always kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, it's always kind of... Uh, a bit cheesy to see these half tracks kind of just running down infantry and surrendering them. You can see that he's yes. currently trying to surround the trees here so that as soon as the Ersatz troopers show themselves to the M3A1 half track, he will be able to get a surrender. Meanwhile, Panther G trying to do its best to clean these up um, before they get too much work done. Panther Shrek has unloaded. Might have a chance to kill the M3 half track as it goes by, but it's just out of range for a little bit. M3 half track does go down to the alpha color, I think. <laughs> that was interesting. Managed to get the grenades in there. Uh, Panther G going to be finishing oh, yeah. off the other half M3 half track. So a lot of the, that breakthrough has kind of been broken down there. But Mimil lost quite a lot in the process. Bear in mind that these M3A1s um, and the M3 half tracks... Like the M3 half track is only 5 points. The yeah, M3A1 like half track is 15 points. Uh, but, but basically those M3 half tracks surrendering Panzergrenz and Erzastruppen pay themselves off double, triple, quadruple even yeah i think it's fine fine that they hold ground because having them run around unchecked is even more annoying but the whole surrendering thing is kind of crap since they can't even shoot at them within 100 meters because their machine guns don't fire that close i don't understand why they can surrender them it doesn't really make sense they don't actually have a weapon that can shoot them i just don't think the n3 half track should be five points they should be 10 that would be good too i just think half track shouldn't surrender people they can't they can't shoot at them at that range so why would you surrender to them mm -hmm. like who do you, what do you care drive up on me buddy <laughs> like, it just shouldn't. It shouldn't matter. Like it's kind of it's dumb. But the big problem here for Emil is he lost this uh, little forest patch around this lake, and it's very difficult to get back in there because the M5 gun cuts off the reinforcement road, and there's kind of like no way to get back here. So this flag is almost permanently lost to you. Yeah, and where the M5A1 and the M8 Scott are moving down, you can put an AT gun in there as well. It covers that road so well, and yeah, uh, yeah it just makes it like I say impossible to get back in there unless uh, Ghosty just kind of ints these like intentionally oh. loses Panzer those units. Panzer IV gets a track, a track broken. Now this Panther's been doing work. It took out two more M5s. I will say Emil's been doing quite well with this thing. It is helping him get back into this game a little bit. Now the M5 gun up north finding the gorilla. Oh, he moved up too close. Will it land the hit? Not at all, I don't think. Nope. Yeah, that Panzer IV track's broken by the APCR of the M5 gun. As used up its APCR though, so it won't be able to get a shot off. I really liked the change that they made when they reduced the uh, APCR yes. from from two or from three to two, because it, it definitely made it a lot less likely that those AT guns just get like those those cheeky easy kills. Um, they they still crit a lot and they're still very strong, but it's at least manageable now. Because usually they miss one of the two, so your unit lives, and and they don't generally die from two hits, so. It, it, yeah, that was a nice change. They're still very strong. I mean, there's nothing to say they're not strong now. Yeah, but it and just a forces time, a bit more micro with the, the supply. Yeah, a lot of times people make little M10 wolf packs with like two M10s and then a supply behind them. 
So they basically have like infinite APCR shells. Now the 259, Panzer IV coming in to take, deal with the M8 Scott on the bottom side. Panther G trying to help with the armored rifles. Doesn't have much HE value on that gun. So not going to be able to help out too much, but uh, certainly been dealing with a lot of the armor, as you mentioned. Things have kind of stabilized, it seems. So honestly, Ghosty doing a good job of stalling the extra income that Mamel gets early on. And then when we move into phase B, we'll see things certainly ramp up massively for Ghosty. And he's going to want to yeah. try and take as much ground as possible. Yeah, so yeah, the issue here is Mamil's getting back in on the back of his extra income, and the truth is he needed to be getting ahead on the back of his extra income, not catching back up with it, uh, because things are going to kind of uh, really roll downhill from here for him, <laughs> let's yeah. say, to put it nicely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, 5th Panzer is fine on this map. It makes sense. You have a lot of 2K stuff. But there's just, there's like 10 other divisions that do the same thing this division does, but much, much better. It's yeah, there's there's no way that enough stuff was banned that he couldn't have played something yeah. else that was better, exactly. Yeah, like, Gross Deutschland, better. Um, 20th Panzer. Oh, that was a crazy I engagement would... on this bottom side, sorry. The no, Panzer IV engaging the M4A1, both of them bounced each other with the first shot. And now the M4A1 oh. missing its third shot. Um, it means the Panzer IV actually wins that engagement. That was crazy. And that's where Panzer IVs feel so good. When they uptrade to things, like, it's like, oh, this unit's great. And then other times they die like they're made of paper, and you're like, this unit is awful. It's really, it's one of those units. In the middle, armored rifles. Kind of being pushed to the edge. So this is what I was talking about, uh, sort of, ghosty intentionally feeding these infantry. Like, he's attack moving them to the edge of these this tree line in the center here, like, completely unnecessarily. They don't need to be there. He just needs to let the M5 gun cover him from the side, and he'll be absolutely fine. He's got the M4 A3E2 Jumbo coming in. Um, that will certainly be able to break down these Panzer IVs over time. So that's a nice choice. And if he can get one into the sort of mid area as well, maybe into this sort of town, he can help support potentially a second push into the mid. Although Emil seems to have broken down the initial engagement up there. Yeah, Somebody's he's definitely got himself. He needs to kind of push across now to try to get this flag, honestly. There's not... He doesn't know, but there's very little here. Ghosty's actually pretty thin in the center. I feel like this series, uh, especially in the, in the last game as well, Mamil was very apprehensive about making pushes. It seemed like he was holding back quite a lot. Um, yeah, it is On odd, the bottom side of Breast West, for example. He's, very, he's usually very aggressive, so it's, it's kind of odd to see him so sat back. I mean, it's still A phase. You are, you have the advantage against you you know you have the income advantage up till about twelve minutes thirteen minutes things start to roll downhill, um, but yeah I mean Emil now finally picking up a thirteen eleven as he crawls his way back to this flag here in the center. I mean part of the issue is too is he's relying on Urzatstrupen in his A phase when he's got his best income you know well or he's got a better income. Oh no the M five gun finding the Panther G losing this would be really bad but the Gila uh, saves the day. Ooh. Yeah, that Grilla shot was spot on. It's always nice when those Grilla like hit the first shot like that, like dead on. And it just did it on the 50 cal in the center too. Beautiful. 50 cal's being secretly the most powerful weapon in the game, so <laughs> they can stop the world from turning. <laughs> I've never ever, ever ever thought that in this game. The only time I thought oh that God. was when half tracks were like when when particularly the third US was meta, and like the 50 cal's on these half tracks were like ridiculously good. I don't think they're as good as they were now. Because they were purposely I mean, they nerfed. Well, yeah. They still pin things down so fast. I don't know. When you compare it to every other machine gun in the game, it seems completely un uneven. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Well, they are the highest caliber machine gun, right? Yeah, but, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess which is scarier, 50 cal coming at you or 1,200 rounds a minute of a smaller caliber? I, you know... I, I have not stood between either, so I I mean, can't you can't say. really say that MG42s aren't good. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are exceptionally good. <laughs> They're better at killing, though. They definitely don't pin the way the 50 cals do. Yeah, I guess. That, that is true. Yeah. P51 coming in again. Oh, just got its bombs off in time. That is a huge bombing strike. Oh. Very nice. Very nice Panther indeed. G in for the Jumbo Wumbo, I would assume. Can it get the APCR on target? Because that's about the only way he kills this Jumbo. 
Finds the recon. Now for the jumbo. Go, Panther G. I hate jumbo, so I do want this to die really bad. <laughs> well, the uh, M15 GC GMCs at the back, and they're both as 40 mil. Managing to help shoot down the ME410 that did absolutely nothing. Panther G actually bounces. Not it fired using AP. AP yeah, not using yeah. APCR in that situation. Definitely no. meant that it didn't have the penetration. So it looks like the jumbo is going to escape, and uh, attack power's dreams are not going to be realized. <sighs> That's all I wanted is the jumbo to die. I just find jumbo they're not they're not historically accurate, Eugen, and your historical accuracy. They have too much armor. I'm not saying they shouldn't have a lot of armor, but they have too much. Yeah, I think they have too much armor as well. It should be like 160. Yeah. They should yeah. be killable by normal units. Like it shouldn't require the highest penetration weapons in the game to, to scratch it. Yeah, a Panther at this range should be able to penetrate it with its normal AP round. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely it's ridiculous. And then it's, like, really not that expensive on top of that. Like, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. The fact that a tiger can't even pretend to kill this thing is kind of is kind of nuts. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, tigers can't even kill them. No, they can't. They can't even, like, <laughs> they can't even, like scratch them. Unless they're, like, like, really close. Yeah. And even then, that's, like, a it maybe has, like, a 10% chance of penetrating when you're point blank. I really like, like uh, Emil's use of artillery. Um, the way he brings it in, like, really close. He's right. very aggressive. I mean, I guess he knows there's no mortars on the other side to come back at him, I guess, but there certainly could be. Yeah, I mean, I the third US is certainly one of those yeah. divisions that does use mortar carriers quite frequently. Um, so, yeah, um, that could potentially be a bad idea. But using like, I, these I uh, these guns at close range is dramatically d reduces dispersion. So it's very, very handy. It's true. I mean... I, this is a good idea until a mortar shows up, and then you know you're putting yourself in range of weapons that you don't need to be in range of. That's the only issue. Oh, M10, yeah, yeah, very nice. Panzer IV goes down. Yeah. Oh no, now the gorilla. Oh, he missed. Another <laughs> M5 gun in. That's part of the issue. Is now there's what there's nine M5 guns in this deck to deal with, and they're all very good. In the Ooh. middle, Panther G almost getting side shot by the M1 gun. Not gonna be a penetration now though, as that 130 millimeters of frontal armor faces the M1. But this bottom side looks like Ghosty's kind of losing a little bit of steam, but we have obviously been in phase B for a while now, so loads more reinforcements coming in on the backside. Two armored rifles of the BAR, the engineers in the half track, and a jumbo. All in one go. Nasty. Yeah, it always, like, V for Victory always seems like a good idea in the first couple minutes of B phase, and then by the end of B phase, you're like, why is this happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> why Pack do 30... I appear to have nothing? Pack 36 fail, failing to actually kill the N3 half track there on the first shot, allowing all of that infantry to unload. So now engineers, armored rifles of the BAR moving in here to engage all this infantry, backed up by loads of tanks. We've got an M8 Scott, we've got an M5A1, we've got an M4105, we've got an M10 every flavor of American tank coming out to play in support of this push. M5 guns APCR actually bounces on the Panther. Will the second one get a loader wounded, of course? One of the best crits you can get. Yeah, very nice. It's going to allow that M10 to stay alive after it got shooter killed itself. Supply is on the way to provide extra APCR for that M10, but it is going to want to have, uh, use light cover from that point forwards because it's very damaged uh, from taking a hit from the Panther G. Another Panther G in. It looks like he's really planning to lean on these. I mean, maybe he picked 5th Panzer just because of the Panther Gs because he wanted to be able to kill Jumbos. Yeah, I guess that's possible. Makes sense, conceptually. I mean, yes, but is there also uh, better divisions that have Panther Gs? <laughs> I, I, I know. I, well, I mean, actually, I mean, Panther Gs are not the most common unit. I mean, what, I'm trying to think of what other tank divisions they, they actually do show up in. 116th. Which honestly would still be better than 5th Panzer. <laughs> <laughs> the 105 artillery actually managed to one-shot the M10 that took damage on the bottom side uh, nice. with an artillery shot, so that was really, really nice. Now it's going for the M5 gun. You can see the range uh, like being so short here, how accurate that is. And the, and the SK-18-105 is probably one of the more accurate AT guns, or artillery guns anyway. Well, I think it's in within range of its own radio, so <laughs> you don't see that often. So you got the uh, the Panther G's helping him out with that, the Panther G Führer on this bottom yeah. side, providing radio there as well. 
So M5 gun almost going down. Um, Panther G, meanwhile, in the middle, taking out an M8 Scott. Uh, the Panther G further up, in a bit of a risky situation, as oh, yeah. the armored rifles are moving forwards with their bazookas. It's one nice thing about the American infantry is they do um, come with a lot of bazookas, and therefore, at the closer ranges, you can deal with enemy armor very, very easily. Yeah, he's uh this is very this is very dangerous. Now, uh Ghosty pushing forward some half tracks up to the north. Not really anything to stop him. And here comes the rifles BAR. Bazooka on target and dead Panther. Ooh. Yeah. Nasty. And that's a lot of points going down, especially yeah. when you only have ninety points per minute <laughs> in phase B. Losing yeah. a two hundred and uh, sorry, one hundred and forty uh point Panther G. Uh yeah, not not ideal. No, not at all. That's rough. Now we have the 81mm mortar coming in from Ghosty. I wonder if he'll try and do a little bit of counter battery here. He's currently going to use it to try and take out the Flak 43 so that he can open up the skies for the Mustang again. Because that Mustang would be amazing to clear out this town and allow oh, yeah. his uh, limited infantry to get in there. One thing that I guess is something that we should mention is... The third US, oh. what what they um, lack in tanks, or what they lack in um, infantry, they make up for in tanks. So they don't have much infantry, and no. uh, therefore you do need to support it best you can. Thankfully, you do have the 81 mm mortars and the Mustang in this case that can help you out. Yeah, the Panther G went down to the M10 and M5 guns in the middle. Really rough loss to the APCR there. And <laughs> excuse me, the thing with third armored is. Despite their very low volume of infantry, every infantry is basically like two for one because they all come with half tracks that are very efficient in terms of price and, and capability. So your infantry almost overperformed despite not being anything impressive on their own because of all the support units that come with them. This division is a very strong combined arms deck. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see at the moment it is pushing forwards very, very rapidly. And there isn't really much in the way. Mamil getting under so much pressure right now from Ghosty's constant pushes the every tick is allowing Ghosty to bring in so many more units and uh, meanwhile on this bottom side M105s <laughs> engaging the Panther G M5 gun actually the one to find the kill and that's another Panther G going down another 140 points down the drain meanwhile further up Panzergrand's getting taken out in their half track by the armored rifles nice ambush there that's uh, gonna leave Mamil in a hole in the middle. The Panzerschreck failing to get on target of the M3 half tracks as they drive on by and surrender the Panzergrands in the center. Oh. So loads of ground being taken now. And this is something that the third US does exceptionally well is it can exploit um, its salience very, very quickly. Yeah, everything's moving quick, right? There's not, there's very few boots on the ground, literally. Uh, so anytime there's a breakthrough, Things with wheels and tracks are driving through rapid loop. Are these half tracks going for the? They can absolutely go after this 105. <laughs> yeah. Just go like. Straight There's so at many it. support weapons here that are just going to get deleted. The the MG42, the Flak 43, the SK18. Oh. Um, oh. The Pack 40. Yeah, you'd love to see the SK18 <laughs> kill the jumbo, wouldn't yes. you? Yes, I would. <laughs> I would have liked that very much. But of course, the SK18's AP round does nine damage. Really, Eugen, nine damage. <laughs> For those who don't know, most tanks have ten health. So that's just like a that's kinda just a screw you to this unit having AP at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like why? If your RD piece really is within silly. AP range, let them delete things. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like come on. Well really? both the pack forty and the SK eighteen go down, so no more anti tank other than this pack thirty six coming in, which is really not gonna do too much in this situation. Oh, nice. Here, the multi ammunition was captured. So he's going to be able to reload his 50 cal ammunition on this half track, potentially, although he's going to probably opt to use that to surrender instead. Um, Flak 43 trying to do its best to hold the line, but the M3 half tracks are coming down to get the machine gun fire onto this infantry. And now we're looking at a 20 to 4 on flags briefly there. As the top side continues to be exploited, the bottom side continues to be exploited. Panther G and Panzer IV coming in. Surprised he had that many points to spare, but we have just moved into Phase C, so his first tick of uh, B for victory and coming Phase C, allowing him to afford these tanks, but not potentially going to be enough <laughs> to save the game. 
it's a drip in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a it's a pale on a battle on a single sinking battleship. It just it does not do. Up north, the Panzer IV that we see driving there actually survived a bazooka shot that missed. Does not happen often. Fun little fun little fact there. Yeah, bazookas missing. are funny. I, I, like bazookas, they're kind of generally good, but there are times when they can be like they like say they can miss, and they can also like bounce off like big big things like elephants, king tigers. Like they don't have the penetration to actually get through the front of those because they're heat rounds, so it's kind of it's kind of funny sometimes when you when you expect an AT infantry at close range to just be able to kill anything, but then it just doesn't. Yeah, down south the Panther G getting two pens in the jumbo. I'd like to note the Panther G fired AP shells first, which is kind of weird. I thought they always auto choose APCR first when they're both uh, selected. Yes, jumbo dead. Oh, Panther dead. <laughs> the heat round managed to kill the panther there. That's really unfortunate. Our men are about to collapse. We must restore the situation now. There is no way. I've no, I don't think I've ever seen that match that in a competitive match at this level. Like, no, I don't think so either. Like he this could potentially really capture every every flag on this map. Like legitimately, he is so close. Like, imagine going 24 flags up and just getting total, like, total, total victory. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, this was a, this was a bad idea. This was a very bad idea. Don't play V for victory into Maverick, everybody. This is the reason why. And especially don't pick a a mid-tier kind of almost trash to do it. (laughs) Especially (laughs) with with Panzer. Yes, absolutely. We're on total defeat territory now. Is it's twenty-one yes. to three, twenty-two to two. Oh. There is that guy in the queue who plays Fifth Panzer like an absolute absolute god. I don't know who he is, but I've run into him several times and he absolutely destroys me every time. I don't know who this guy is, but it's the only division he plays, and he's like, it's it's actually very unpleasant to play him. I don't know who it is though. Well, after twenty-three minutes and forty-nine seconds, Ghosty proving he is an absolute powerhouse in the Soul Division League. Mamil questionable decision i feel like mumil in this series could have it almost doesn't feel like he tried as much as he could have uh, agreed i think he was memeing it felt very memey yeah i, I don't know it's, it's a bit unfortunate um we, we do like to see these games be like super competitive on the highest level and it doesn't feel like mumil really put in the effort so much as uh, as ghosty did but ghosty nicely done going to be moving on to the final with a 2-0 win um 2875 kills to 1895 losses very convincing uh victory there for him yeah yeah i mean nothing too surprising here in the kds i mean ghosty got lots of kills the panzer G- the panther g at the beginning definitely cleaned up some stuff all cheap stuff but stuff yeah the panther g in the middle was performing very well but that was about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the only that was a small light in a very dark game there for Emil. Um, <laughs> it's a fair, uh, that's not to mention the many Panther G's that didn't get a kill yeah. and just died. Indeed. Well, that's gonna be it. Anything else you'd like to add? No, great casting with you. Always, as always, looking forward to uh, hopefully the other semifinal and eventually the final. Yeah, we gotta do some research about the other semifinal, but. If it's there, we'll, we'll cast it, guys, of course. But that's it for now. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.